Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make some miniature hairbrushes. Alright, so the first thing you need to get is some coffee stirring sticks, some skewers, some pipettes, pipe cleaners, whatever you want to call them, some Velcro, and a stick pen. Velcro side that is rough. That's the side that you're going to need. All right. So to make your hairbrush, the first thing you have to do is decide how big you want your hairbrush to be. All right. And how long. Once you've decided that, then you want to take a sand and block or a sand and rod, whichever you have, and you want to sand a coffee stirring stick. Just keep going back and forth. See how it's leaving that angle on the wood? Now you have that nice angle. So go ahead and flip it over. And do the same thing to the other side. So once it looks like this, then you want to go ahead and trim off the end. All right, once you have that, now you need to very carefully round that corner. Hold it tightly because you don't want it to snap. This is super, super fine. So I'm going to go with one that's a little bit more coarse to get it started. Kind of round it into a semicircle or as close to a circle as you can get. Alright, so then you should be left with a shape like this. Now, for your bristles, you can use the pipe cleaner, like that. Or, you can use the piece of Velcro. For this one, we're going to use the Velcro. And this has an adhesive back to it, um, only because I had it but we'll end up gluing it as well as using it with the adhesive. But for starting purposes, we're gonna just kinda get it on there. Trim it up. And then There you have what looks like a hairbrush. You can paint it whatever color you want. And I would personally, um, with adhesive, I would put some crazy glue on it to kind of keep it 
in place because it doesn't always stay with that adhesive. So just put a little bit of glue on there and hopefully that'll hold it for you. Then you have yourself a nice little wooden hairbrush. Now, it doesn't have to be wood because you can always turn around and sand it and do whatever. Sorry about the focus. All right, and if you wanna have a hole in there, I would suggest that you get one of the little teeny tiny drill bits that um, are about the size of a stick pen. All right, now to do the next hairbrush, we're gonna make a round one. This one's pretty easy. We're gonna take some hot glue to start off with right on here. Then we're gonna take our pipe cleaner. And we're gonna bend it around there. All right, so we got some hot glue on there first. Now to make sure that it stays in place, we're going to put some crazy glue on there because, you know, hot glue only holds so much when you're putting it on a little bit of spi um, space. Right, and at the top, you want to leave a little itty bit of like glue bubble just so it has a rounded look. I think I got the world's strongest pipe cleaner in my hand. one of the ones I didn't get from Dollar Tree. <laughs> All right. So I'm rubbing it on a table just to kind of get that to bend in because it won't bend with my finger. All right, so now you have that little roundness at the top. Right? It looks like a round part of a tooth or a um, hairbrush. This camera don't stop focusing, right? I'm gonna have a very blurry video. All right, now take your 3-in-1 multi-cut tool. And then there you have that. sand it down. Now you've got a round hairbrush. You can take a stick pen to hold it. Paint that little bubble of hot glue. And it doesn't have to be black. You can paint it pink, purple, whatever. It just so happened to be black on my table. I 
think I did a tutorial on hairbrushes a while back, a little different than this one. So you'll have to go back and look at that one to see how I did that and see which one works best for you. Cause I can't remember. It's been so long ago. It's been a, at least, I want to say at least a couple years since I did that one. But while I was cleaning out the room, I found the hairbrush stuff and I decided, well, let me make an updated video of this. All right. So the trick to having this dry without having to touch it is to put it into a clip. And then there you have it. As far as this hairbrush goes, we're going to do one side at a time. And I'm using nail polish because it dries very gloss and I don't have to put the um, gloss coating over top of it. I do think I'm going to need some more nail polish because this one's running low. Just like this. finish painting it all right and I'm just putting it in here to dry but basically that's what it's gonna look like coffee stirring stick and some velcro this was a bamboo skewer with some pipe um, pipe cleaners or pipettes, whatever you want. No, they're not pipettes, they're pipe cleaners. And you can do the same thing with the brown or you can get some fuzzies or whatever. And then the other thing you can do as well that's pretty easy is you can take the same thing and you can do it on a thinner coffee stir and stick. And then you can put it right down in there. Let that hot glue cool. Okay, so once you've done that and it's cooled off, you want to go ahead and take your wire cutters, cut off the excess. Now for um, this one, because there's not really anywhere to grab it, I'm going to paint it beforehand. And if you want it to have a little bit of puffiness to it, instead of just being a flat hairbrush, you can. You can either take another one of these and glue it to the handle in the back and sand it around, or you can use some puffy paint. Either one will work. I think for this one, we'll go ahead and, um, cause I do actually want it to have a little bit of thickness. I think we'll go ahead and glue it to it. Okay, so because I'm lazy, I'm going to go ahead and sand it on a Dremel bit that I put into the drill press. And um, you can sand it by hand though. But I'll show you what I'm doing. <laughs>
I'm gonna cut off the end with a three and one multi-cut tool. the shape that I want it to be how it's got the little indentation here and it goes down and then it's kind of like more rounded here I don't know if you can really see that on camera or not but um, basically this looks like it's going upward and this looks like it's going upward and then it's got a little bit of a dip there which is kind of a shape of a hairbrush so now that I have that I'm gonna go ahead and finish sanding the rest of this by hand. All right, so I've got my red sandpaper, which is super, super fine. I wanna say it's like a thousand grit, maybe 1200. I can't remember, I bought it like a couple years ago. And this is just honing in on that to thin it out just a tiny bit more and you can do all of this by hand this is just getting it smoother now you could have just stopped with just the paint stirring stick or the coffee stirring stick and you would have been fine but I wanted to have some contour to the brush. Not a lot, but enough. Especially back at the neck. Well, I call it the neck. I don't know what you want to call it, but like right there. In that little area where it's going down to the hairbrush. That's the part that I think it needs to have it. But again, you could have kept it where it was and you could have painted it and then did the rest of it. That way you only have a little bit to do. All right, because there's really nothing to hold on to this with, I'm just gonna clip the brushes because it really, you should have probably kept it on at least longer up here or something, painted it and then did this because it would be easier. But because I didn't do that, I'm kind of stuck at what I've done. All right, now I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this. Okay, so now it's drying, but I think you can see the contour of the brush a little bit better now that it's painted. But you can kind of see how it goes up just a little bit in the back. Gives it kind of like a handle. Right, so that has to dry. And again, clamps are your friends. Clamps and clips, they tend to help out a lot when you're trying to get things to dry. All right, so this one is dry. And then there, that pushes. Now, if you don't like it being so bushy, you can always turn around and cut some of it off. But to fluff it out, you can take that Velcro that you use for the other brush, and you can kind of brush it to get your fur back from where you were holding it flat. I'm 
I moved that over there because I've hit it with my finger. Okay, now this one is not quite dry yet, but you can kind of see how it's going to end up. see the teeth all right and because I want this to have a high gloss I'm gonna give it one more coat because see how that's nice and shiny there I want the back to be exactly the same way so I'm gonna let this sit here or give it another coat and go from there once it's done okay so now that's gonna dry Still wet but there's the hairbrush all right so they're gonna dry and we'll give it maybe another coat or so and um, in the meantime like and subscribe leave a question suggestion or comment below and I will see you in the next video but if you would like some build tips or some free templates free furniture um, printable templates and stuff like that go ahead and visit my website at dollhouse tutorials dollhouse or dollhouse measure madness and tutorials .com, either one and check out our facebook page and pinterest page also um, i'm thinking of doing an etsy shop so if there is anything that you would like to see in the etsy shop leave it in the comments below because it's something i'm considering all right thanks a lot have a wonderful wonderful day Okay, you guys, so you can use some bingo daubers if you'd like to stain the stick prior to doing it, and then do it, and then just touch up the areas where you sand it. Okay, so here are the three that we did on camera. You can see that contour of that hairbrush a little bit there. All right. This is the one we sanded by hand, and then our little round brush. Okay, so then I did a couple over at the drill press, and I used the round disc sander. Now, if you don't have a drill press and you don't have a round disc sander, then you can always do, instead of a square one like this, you can do some sandpaper wrapped around a wooden dowel. And then just tape it to it and use the one end that's not taped and you can just kind of go back and forth and get that round look okay so that's what that looks like hopefully you're getting a good view of this All right, so the clamps I like to use to hold my things. And then I also do something like this as well. Okay, so here's some little tiny brushes that I did on the drill press. Alright, well, like, subscribe, leave a question, suggestion, or comment below, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.